Cool. So all that comes into you're all excited about video. Now, how do we actually do it? What, what platforms do you use to bring this to your clientele? Um, a couple assumptions here, like Josh mentioned, we're going to, these uh, recommendations are based mainly on video demand being your primary goal here. Live streaming is a separate conversation. And then the other one is that you are to the point in your business where having unique logins per person is important to you. Otherwise, you could have a video on demand library on your website with a single universal password. You can have a private Facebook group where you post member only stuff. There's other ways to do it there where, um, but the assumption here when you actually are ready to upgrade to a software who can do this long term for you is you need unique logins per person. What we're talking about here is actually the Vimeo OTT platform. So for this uh, comparison, we're going to look at the Vimeo OTT starter plan. So Vimeo OTT um, is the one that gets talked about a lot because you see some big brands are on it. Corpower Yoga, Black Swan, um, Neighborhood Bar. There's a lot of kind of that next level, like we want to go a little bit bigger who have already been on Vimeo OTT. So it is a trusted platform, which is great. Um, it costs a dollar a subscriber plus $100 to you as the business for every 10 hours of content that you upload, plus Stripe fees. And all these platforms are gonna include payment processing fees. So you have video content filtered, but basically people are just going to click and view videos. There's no modules, there's no text that goes with them, there's no um, you know, PDF workbooks you wanna download. It is just straight up a video gallery. You can sell one-time products. So say you have a you know, five video series that you want to sell as a one-off price, you can sell that, or you can do monthly subscriptions, get access to our full library for X a month. So this is a very good entry place to be if you, have, um, you are one of those brands that sees yourself world domination, household name in the future. Um, that is kind of all the same platform, very big price increases when you get up to that level. What we're talking about here with the starter plan is in browser viewing only. You have to have a Chrome or Safari, your phone type stuff. You're not getting the custom apps that are showing on the TV. Connie, one quick question. The $100 for 10 hours, is that monthly or is that one time? Yeah, so it's a dollar per month per subscriber. That is monthly. But every 10 hours of upload, you pay 100 bucks just once, you guys, for that. It's just a bandwidth thing. But yeah, you would you would hit that fast. I mean, 10 hours is short. It's less than 10 classes. So yeah, okay. Um, another pro of the Vimeo OTT platform is there's a sales page included. So the checkout, they give you um, like a landing page where you, know, you can get a free trial, sign up. And you, chances are you might have even uh, done this at some point. And seeing that but you don't have to worry about building that sales page it's, it's included in the platform you know it looks okay just out of the box they have some templates you can uh, upload your image or your logo your colors uh, you upload the videos you create the stuff it's it's fairly user-friendly where you can get it up and set up um, so cons the the drawbacks of the Vimeo OTT program uh, no content other than videos so that you know might work for you might not work for you but if you do want to like Josh was saying, diversify into uh, you know, online content to support your teacher training, that type of scenario. That's, this might not be the best platform for you because it is just straight videos. I don't think it's very good as a marketing tool because uh, like I mentioned, it's a dollar a subscriber. So if you are running lead generation marketing campaigns, trying to get people so you can nurture and say you wanted to give away a you know, three-day beginner course, uh, to get people used to get them a, a taste of what you offer either in studio or in um, you're paying for those subscribers forever until unless you you make it a fixed date so it's not really a great uh, marketing tool which is one of the advantages to having good video content is you can um, give something away for free and then nurture them but my recommendation for going with Vimeo OTT is if you want a simple on-demand video library, you want to get it launched pretty fast because it's completely independent of your website. You don't have to redesign your website to work for this. You just link from your website to it. Um, and if you're thinking that you really want to market and grow video subscribers independent from your studio members, this is a different revenue stream. You're okay with that dollar per subscriber, putting some money up front for those content uploads, and then growing it with people spending money on it. The other thing to this is say, if you want your normal members that you bill and invoice via MindBody, you want them to have access. Say you have 200 members at your studio, you're gonna pay $200 a month for your existing members to have access to it. All right, the second platform I wanna talk about is MemberSpace. 
So member space uh, adds payment gate wall or gateways payment functionality to your existing web website. So the basics of it, member space is $25 a month. Yeah, so Stripe fees are pretty much universal across all of these. Most of these platforms use Stripe to process um, the payments. And Stripe fees, I believe, are 2.8% of the transaction plus 30 cents a transaction, something like that. Um, and that's kind of universal. That's, that pretty much applies to anywhere who you're going to be using Stripe. Um, then on top of that, the, the way that member space is making their money here, because they do have a low monthly subscription rate, that $25, is they're going to take an additional 4% off of, you know, just to make math easy, say you had a $100 sale, $4 of that is going to go to member space, and, plus, and then plus whatever your Stripe fees is going to go to Stripe. Um, so right, you can so pay more, yeah. Yeah. Different ways. When you get more people, you can spend fifty dollars a month and only have a two percent transaction fee. So you can start kind of making those work out for you, which is great if you are one of those people who wants to give free access to all your members who you're already invoicing and billing someplace else and mind body or wherever else. I mean, let me just be really clear on this. This is the way payment processing is the way people like cut in to the pie a little bit. So it's just kind of unavoidable when you start trying to set up payment processing and it's a commonplace thing. It's unfortunate, but to be clear, so Stripe's payment processing is X percent plus a flat. And these guys actually charge their own 4% transaction fees. Um, you do also need to run the platform off of your own website. So that might be an expense up front. And um, I recommend having something like Vimeo Pro which is that $20 a month. Uh, you can use YouTube, but really when you're talking about charging people for this premium content, using embedded YouTube videos, looks like you're using free embedded YouTube videos. So if you're actually charging for it and the other advantages that come with Vimeo Pro, you'll probably want to have a Vimeo account or something, Wistia or something. I like it in that if you are looking at keeping expenses as low as possible from the very beginning, this is a way to do that without having, you know, a $200 a month software fee, regardless of if you're making any money off of it. This is tied to the revenue you're making. So, um, so it can be advantageous if you're smaller. Um, the pros, the content is actually on your own website. So that's great from a brand authority standpoint. You control how it looks. You control what all the pages you want protected. If you want different pages here and there, you have maximum flexibility on that. Um, so you also have, you know, if you want a page that's for teacher training, if you want your on-demand video library, if you want um, this five-day beginner course, you can have all that built out on your website on different pages, and you can protect each of those pages with member space, charge a different amount of money for access to them. So a lot of flexibility, a lot of brand, um, it's all staying on your website, so it, it stays within your brand. Um, it also is the cheapest option for unique passwords permissions to view stuff, at, you know, at the, at the lowest level, not necessarily scaling like we just talked about. But if you are looking at like the straight up cheapest way that I can next month, get this in place, $25 a month plus all the fees is, is there. The cons of it, it is more setup work required for you. Remember in Vimeo OTT, I said, it's all the sales pages there. You upload the stuff. It's all very templated and very there. Um, you have to build, in this case, the setup scenario, you have to build the sales page and the content pages on your own website. So that's great. If you like the way your website works, you have a designer that you like working with, you can make it look really branded and on you, but that is more work or more setup work on your part. You also, I would say, need some type of pro hosting videos account, Wistia or Vimeo Pro, uh, just to, to keep your, your, your content safe. And then it really looks only as good as you or your designer makes it. So whereas there is a certain level of design that you kind of are stuck with with Vimeo OTT, you, there's also a certain amount of design uh, that you get by default there too. And I just wanted to comment, uh, Lisa was asking the question about metrics for measuring videos, such as like viewed or number of minutes viewed or whatever else. Anytime we're talking about a, a video specific metric, it would be the video player where the metric would exist. So this would be the way for you to integrate the payment processing in the members area, but you would still, as to Connie's point, need a video player like Vimeo or she mentioned Wistia, and that's where those metrics would come from, which 
to your question, Lisa, this is how some of us might make a decision about which video player to go with. Um, you get okay metrics with Vimeo, but Wistia's metrics are like through the roof good and you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. It's significantly more expensive though. So it depends on how far you want to go and uh, with that and also your budget for it as well. So yeah, that's the overall recommendation of that. If you want control and you want it on your own website and you like the idea of control, um, you can do a lot with the flexibility of member space and member space works on Squarespace, Wix, WordPress, Weebly, all the W's, um, probably some other platforms. It's basically built to work on whatever website you currently use. Platform free is Teachable. This is another one I recommend. Um, it is $99 a month plus Stripe fees. So flat rate, no extra transaction costs, but it's hundred a month. Um, it is your traditional course platform with modules and lessons. So you've probably all been through one of those before compared to the Vimeo OTT where you log in and you see a bunch of videos and you choose a video to play. This is different topical courses where you have module one, different lessons. It's more of a pro progression through the content. The user also can see bars of, you know, your 33% complete of this. Um, it's a more educational platform and layout. Um, it is also a standalone platform like Vimeo OTT. Doesn't require your own website. You're gonna link from your website to this other platform over there and people are gonna do their education stuff over on your, your Teachable platform. You can sell one-time products, subscriptions, or free products as well. It is also a very trusted platform and that's why it gets a recommendation. It's been around for years. Um, it's not common in the yoga industry, but it is very common on online educators in general. So it's trusted, um, it's a very competitive pricing. It also includes a sales page like uh, Vimeo OTT, which we'll look at an example in a second. You have a lot of options, a lot of flexibility for the type of content that you wanna deliver. You can do that with Vimeo or with Teachable. Um, video for sure, you're gonna embed video, uh, text, workbooks, you've got quizzes even, um, all that type of stuff. It's also probably the fastest and easiest to set up of all of these. They onboard people all the time who set this type, this type of thing up. Um, the cons of it, it's not typically used for wellness businesses. So you're basically gonna take a tool and you're gonna have to kind of invent how you want your curriculum to be laid out there. Um, it is harder to navigate um, if you're only doing on-demand video library only. You only have one product, you want video on-demand library, you want people to be able to filter out those videos. This is probably not the right platform for you because it's a little harder to find those videos. You could structure it as modules and lessons, but you're doing it like that instead of just having a nice filterable library. The solution um, it is you would look at it like one style of class would be a course, basically. For those of you who have been with us for a long time, the first platform we used was Teachable. So we're very familiar with it and it's pretty slick and they keep up in the, upping their game. So. It is organizationally and ease of use, uh, a very realistic option. Where we found the biggest con was, other than some of the things here, is the level of control of design. Now, technically it does have a CSS block in it that you can like go in and, and really adjust on things, but the advantage is the user friendliness of it and you don't have a lot of user friendly ways to drastically affect the design. You're kind of stuck within their template. Um, but that might not matter if it's just going to be for your, for your courses slash videos or whatever as well. So this is a pretty good option that I think less people are, are looking at. Yes. There's no per member fee as well. Home hot yoga was asking. It's just flat 99 a month. Is that right, Connie? That's my understanding as well. Yeah. So you're also still going to be looking at needing Wistia or Vimeo pro or something as well as that. One other one thing I would just mention on that, though, the subtle difference is when Connie's saying embed, you don't embed like website. You don't like go and take embed code and put it in or whatever. You just chuck the Vimeo or the YouTube link in and it just populates it in Teachable. So in terms of how it works, practically speaking, what you would do is you're going to upload your video to your place and then on your Teachable site, you're just going to put the link in and it puts it there. So from a user friendliness standpoint, they've got that part of it pretty dialed, which is cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So we'll look at what it looks like in a second. So basically my recommendation for Teachable is if your brand has a strong educational element, you want a more traditional course-like features, those apply to you. 
um, you want easy setup and you want a trust, trusted platform. Teachable is the way to go. Um, others to consider. So mind body. So I would say as of right now, it's not something you can use because you can't tie pricing conditions in mind body to uh, view access permissions on videos right now. That, that link is not there yet. They are supposedly working on that right now. Um, how fast that happens and how fast they add the required features where it makes it a really viable platform option, no one really knows. So my suggestion there would be keep an eye on it. If you need to act and get on some other platform right now, do it. Maybe consider not locking yourself into an annual plan elsewhere if you're very interested in seeing how fast MindBody gets this uh, together. Because it, in the whole big picture, yeah, it would be great if your clients only had one login and they could use it across all of your, your stuff. Um, so it's one to watch. As of today, it's not something I can really recommend jumping on right now, but keep watching it. I would just keep it on your radar. The big thing that they're they're solving for right now is the payment processing element. So if the situation is that you can have a pass that allows for virtual and not virtual, and that when someone cancels, they lose access automatically and there's not the other steps there, that would be a huge case for why you would go with this. Namastream is the other one that I get asked about a lot. And I actually have several clients who use Namastream who are really happy with it. So um, it is a lot like Teachable as far as the way that the course uh, is uh, laid out, the course modules and everything. It's $150 a month. It also has live stream events capability. So if you're looking at kind of something that can do both, um, my clients who are on it are happy with it. Uh, the reason that I put Teachable above Namastream for my recommendations is one, Namastream is a little more expensive. I'm not sure, you know, this was a video demand filter mainly that I was looking through it. Namastream is also a very small company and has only been around for a couple years. Um, so, you know, there's a little more volatility in that. Teachable is a little more solid of a platform. So on that note, comparing the, the Vimeo OTT, the top end, the top level ones here. So this is Uscreen, it's uscreen.tv. Um, this is the one that's like 250 a month. Um, I have heard that this is 500 a month from talking to some other people who have, who have uh, started to go down this route. Uh, this is where you start getting into apps and live streaming, uh, video on demand on all of them. So 250, 500 and up. Uh, this is where you can start getting your own your your own apps going. Connie, Connie, can we pause for a second? Hey, Jen, if you hear us, can you unmute yourself? Did you have any Did you have any comments on this? Yeah, so I was our team was ready to launch our Vimeo OTT site actually this week. We were really excited about it, and um, I ran into a conversation I with UScreen, and we've decided to halt and switch everything over to UScreen. Um, one thing about Vimeo is that the customer service is awful. <laughs> like it's all like automatic and it's like you can't talk to a real person. Whereas you screen, you actually get to talk to someone, they can help you, they can onboard you. They, and, and I value that so much. And I think in the long run, um, you screen is much more um, affordable, especially if you want like an app or a live stream option and all the extra add-ons that Connie was talking about. So. If you're interested in Vimeo OTT or going down that route, I, I, I'm happy to talk to you one off about the reason why, like literally put hours into it. And I said, we, we made the decision to stop and, and, and redo it all again, because Uscreen was that much. Um, it just made more sense. All right. Um, member space. We talked about this one. So this is what member space looks like. You can get a 14 day free trial if you want to play around with it. Um, this is an example of how you would set up, um, a member space site. This is Maria's site and the, basically replicated what Vimeo OTT can do. Um, but I think in a little more branded way on say, stays on her website. I can now as a user, I can manage my online account right here. I can edit my profile. I can um, upsells. You can put upsells here. Um, Want to buy this product too. That type of stuff um, goes here. So it is all on the website. It's using these overlay windows. Um, the overlay windows and the path of the protection on the, on the site is the member space part. And it does need to be integrated on your normal website. The only other company that I'll put on people's radar is called Appiant, A-P-I-A-N-T-E. They're positioning themselves I, as an integration platform 
for mind body. As if all that platform stuff is still making your head spin and you're like, I just need to make a decision. I would start with teachable. You can get it up and going in a day. Yep. You know, you can start adding content. You can start testing things. You're not locked in forever. Um, it's going to be the, the quickest, the most flexible and the quickest short term decision you can make. To, if you just need someone to tell you what platform to try first, because I know sometimes we just need that, go sign up for a teachable trial and just start building and see, you know, sketch out what content you want and just go, go with that. Try that for a while. That's a good recommendation. Yeah.